Okay. So uh, we're going to just kind of discuss and review a little bit about what we've been learning so far this week. Um, so who can remind me on like Monday, we talked about the Virginia plan and we talked about the New Jersey plan. So who can remind me what is the New Jersey plan? What was um, the Virginia plan? JT, give me one more. All right, so the New Jersey plan, um, since they were small and they, didn't, they wouldn't get as much power as the Virginia plan, they were asking for one vote for every state, so it was all fair, so they were equal. Very good, so Virginia, I mean, sorry, so New Jersey, they were a smaller state, and so they wanted only one vote for each state to try and make it fair between all the states. And what about the Virginia plan, Austin? Well, Virginia was the bigger state at the time, meaning they wanted to go out of all the population, meaning they would have had more based on how many, how many people were in the state. Okay, exactly right. So Virginia, they wanted um, their representation to be based off of your population. So however many people you had in your state, you're, you would have an advantage over the smaller states because what? You have more what? Population. population. You have more population, which equals more what? Power. More power. Who, uh, but you get what in, in the government? You get more, if you have more people, you get more what? Money. Starts with an R. Um, representatives. Good, Austin. You get more representatives, right? Um, if you're a smaller state, you might only have like one representative, but if you have, um, if you're a bigger state, you could have multiple. So we have these two different plans and something kind of brings these two plans together. What is that? That brings those two plans together. Who can remember? Uh, what is that called? Uh, um, Austin. Bill okay. Um, we're going to get to that. Not quite. There's, it starts with a C. Constitution. No, 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 not constitution. <laughs> Uh, it's going to bring them together. What's it called if, so there's two disagreements, right? New, New Jersey has their opinion and they're disagreeing with Virginia. Virginia has their opinion. So let's say uh, uh, Braden and JT, they disagree. Um, what is, what is, what would we find to fix the, uh, fix the disagreement? Fist fight. That starts with a C. We would fix the agreement by coming to a court. Uh, uh, um, Maya? Tom. Conclude? No. Okay, we're all we're close. Oh. I know it's on the tip of our tongue. Just Cameron. Compromise? Good, Cameron. Okay, we would come to a compromise, right? If there's two different sides sides to the issue, and we want to solve the issue, get to the the bottom of it, try and fix it, we're going to come to a compromise, right? And so, what we get from the New Jersey and the Virginia plan is called the Great Compromise. And who can remember from us talking? I think it was on Tuesday. What was the Great Compromise? What was the compromise they came oh, up with to try and help each side, Austin? So the uh, those they would break them. They would break the government up into uh, branches, different branches. Okay. And they agreed to do the Virginia thing. Okay, you're on the right track. Yes. Does anyone else want to add on to that? No. No one has anything. Okay. So I'll refresh our memories. Uh, so they decided that there's going to be two legislative branches to our government. Two legislative branches. What are those two houses, those two branches? Um, legislative and executive. Okay, those are um, not the ones that I'm talking about in this instance. They're two houses. We're going to have the... Um, House of Representatives. House of Representatives, and then we're going to have what? House of Representatives. No, House of Representatives. The other one starts with an S. Cameron? The Senate. The Senate, Senate. okay. We have the House of Representatives and we have the Senate. And we're gonna, our compromise revolves around the House of Representatives and the Senate. Who can, who can remember, anyone, this is ringing a bell to anybody, remembering the compromise? Okay, the compromise was this. So Virginia, they're a big state and they want it to be based off of what? Population, Population right? So the big states, to, uh, to help them out and go for their side of the argument, we're gonna give the, Virginia, basically, the House of Representatives. So the House of Representatives, and this is still how it works today, your representatives are based on what, do you think? Population. Population, right? They're going to uh, go towards the Virginia plan. So the, um, they're all based off of population. So Texas, who do you think, who do you guys think, Bryson, who do you think would have more representatives in the House of Representatives, Texas or Pennsylvania? Texas. Texas. Texas, right? Texas is going to have more more citizens, right? Who do you think is going to have more representatives in the House of Representatives? Texas. Christian, California, California or um, or Carolina. South Carolina. 
California. California, right? Because they're we're, they're a really big state, so they'll have more representatives in the House of Representatives. Okay. So does that make sense? That was their compromise for Virginia plan, was that the House of Representatives, we're gonna split the House up based on population, okay? So now to compromise with New Jersey, what do you think we're gonna do with the Senate? We're gonna... What did, what did New Jersey want again, Christian? They wanted everyone to be equal. Everyone to be equal. So what do you think we're gonna do with the Senate? Oh, you each get, you get a certain, you get only one Senate. Okay, you're going to get an equal amount of senators, right? Does anyone know how many senators we have? No. Like oh, six, eight, eight, nine, seven, two. two. Oh, okay. Oh. So we're going to have all an equal, each state is going to have an equal amount of senators, and they're going to have how many senators? Two. Two, right? Okay, so this is called the Great Compromise. The Great Compromise. We're going to compromise, meet in the middle of our issue. I'll take Virginia is going to get a little bit of their way. New Jersey is going to get a little bit of their way. Okay, so we have the Great Compromise. So then, now uh, under the Great Compromise, we're figuring out how many votes everyone gets, how many representatives we get in the House. So it's based off population. But we're going to come to another compromise of what? We did a worksheet on this where we were doing some math. What um, was this? Was the, what was this compromise? It was about the um, slave system. Um, wasn't that really you guys are on the right track. What's it called? You guys did math on this one. Yeah. Um, oh. The assignment we did on Tuesday where we had to do math. Everyone was what was the compromise called? You guys, it was at the top of that box when you guys were doing the math and you guys had to do some calculations, Cameron. The Exactly, right? It was called the three-fifths compromise. Uh, who can explain to me what was the three-fifths compromise, JT? Pretty much they were going to count three-fifths of the slaves okay. um, and um, the other type, I think. Good. So why did the South think it was unfair for them to... Because the, they didn't have big cities and stuff, they were farmers. Exactly so right. So they decided to um, count three-fifths of the slaves. Okay, exactly right, JT. So the South thought it was unfair um, to count off population because in a lot of they were going to lose and get less representation than a lot of the North because the North has a lot of these big cities. Um, they have these big cities, and so uh, the South was like, okay, so in order to make it more fair, we think our slaves should count towards the vote. And um, what did the northern states think about that? No, no. No, right? Because it doesn't benefit them. They're like, the north was saying, no, your slaves shouldn't count. And the south was saying, yes, our slaves should count. Yeah, JT? And then the north brought up a good point that the south, when it comes to taxes, they don't want, like to pay for their slaves. But now they want to count their slaves. Exactly right. So the north was also bringing out the argument saying, okay, so now all of a sudden you want your slaves to count for your representation because you want more representation, but then when it comes around to paying your taxes, and your taxes are based off of population, then you're saying that your slaves shouldn't count. So how does that make sense? So we're gonna to come to a compromise for both of those issues, and that is called what again? Three-fifths compromise. The three-fifths compromise. So when it comes to counting our population of slaves, how much of the slaves are we gonna count? Three-fifths. Three-fifths, right? Okay, pretty straightforward, right? The name gives it away. Three-fifths compromise means we're going to count three-fifths of our slaves. Um, so then uh, those are called the Great Compromise and the Three-fifths Compromise. But uh, we still don't necessarily have a constitution yet. So we hold the Constitutional Convention. And who is kind of the leader or the head of that Constitutional Convention and, and takes charge in writing most of the Constitution? Um, Watched a video about Madison, Good. Uh, James Madison. Good. Okay, James Madison. He's kind of the leader of the Constitutional Convention, and he's going to um, kind of take charge in, in that. And so at this point, you guys need to understand that um, this is all brand new to everyone. At the Constitutional Convention, there is no country in the entire world that is self-governed. Okay, everyone, every single country has some sort of leader. They have a king or a queen or a, like a dictator, someone who just rules that country and has all the power. Nobody is ruled by the people at this time. So they're trying something completely new. So um, James Madison, 
they're kind of making this stuff up as they go, but they don't want it to just be something so weak that it breaks down because they already kind of tried that and it didn't quite work. What was that called? Bill Bright. Not the Bill Brights. What was it called that was kind of weak, didn't work? Uh, the, um, the Articles of Confederation. Good, the Articles of Confederation. They're like, we already kind of tried out self-government. That was our first attempt, the Articles of Confederation, but it didn't work because the uh, federal government didn't have enough power, right? The national government, the country's government didn't have enough power. So it didn't actually work out. So they're like, let's put our heads together at this convention and let's try and form a plan to get us some self-government that will work. It will be successful. So uh, James Madison, he has a lot of influences and we talked about a few of those influences yesterday. We're gonna talk about a few more of them today. One of them was a really old document. We watched a video over it, written in 1215. What was that called? The Magna Carta. Good, JT. Called the Magna Carta. We watched a video yesterday, and it was a very old document. And we see some of the principles from that old document show back up in the Constitution. What was one uh, principle or idea from the Magna Carta that oh, shows back right. up in the Bill of Rights? You have the right to a jury. Good, you have the right to a trial among your peers, right? And so the big idea from the Magna Carta was that nobody is above the law. So they're saying, regardless of whether you're the king or you're a peasant, you're at the very bottom, right? You have to follow the law. The law applies to everybody. And if you are to get in trouble or accused of something, you have the right to a trial among your peers, right? So James Madison sees this old document and said, hey, that's a good idea. I like that idea. We should have that in our country. We should have that. So he kind of steals it from the Magna Carta and puts it into the United States Constitution. Yes. Even if you are the president, you still be judged. So even the president of the United States, okay, the president is still has to follow all the laws. They're not above the law. All the laws that apply to all the lies that apply to us, they apply to okay. our leaders. Okay. So we should give them whatever we ask for. I mean. There, if, if people do something wrong, they have consequences, right? That's all the Constitution is saying is that there are consequences for your actions, okay? And nobody's above the law. So, one, I wanna, again, one influence we talked about yesterday was the Magna Carta. We're going to talk about a few more influences today. So, I'm going to get that going. I'm going to stop it all the time.